Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Animalia part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us move ahead with the next phylum that is Arthropoda. Now as I had told you, as I had told you before only that in this Arthropoda phylum, we will talk about the different types of insects, be it butterfly, housefly, mosquitoes, grasshopper, so they all fall under this category of Arthropoda. And you will be surprised to know that a huge number of species exist for this phylum. Almost 9 lakh species of Arthropoda increase. Till now we were talking in thousands. Sometimes we were getting 5,000, 7,000, 10,000. But now we are saying that some 9 lakh species exist. So this is the largest phylum of the Animalia kingdom. Because you have so many members in it. They again have a complex body differentiation because they are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic and hemocylomate. Now you must be thinking that till now it was all silomate so it should have also been a silomate. It is a silomate but this hemo word is used due to the presence of blood. The word hemo generally comes with blood. For example, we say hemoglobin. Right? We spoke about hemolymph. So here the internal body cavity or the coelom is filled with blood and that is why it is known as hemocelomate. So that is one speciality of the arthropoda phylum. They have organ system level of organization, segmented body. So here in arthropoda as well we have segmented body. So here you can see these are the different segments here. They are all different segments. organisms with jointed legs now why are they given the name arthropoda because of arthropoda means jointed legs so these organisms have jointed legs what do you mean by jointed legs if you look at their legs you see you can observe some joints here observe some joints here you can observe some joints here so this is this is known as jointed legs so their legs are such that it looks as if they have been jointed together so organisms with jointed legs fall under the phylum of arthropoda. Now what are the advantages of the presence of this or jointed legs? They help them to move quickly and easily. So their locomotion becomes easier. So they easily move from one place to another. When we talk about the overall structure of the body, the body is broadly divided into three parts. That is head, thorax and abdomen. So this is head, this is thorax and this is abdomen. Okay, so jointed legs, this gives the name arthro. Arthro means jointed legs or leg-like structure or appendages that is known as poda. So they are called arthropoda. Talking about the skeleton, body is covered by exoskeleton made up of chitin. So chitin is quite tough and hard so it protects the animal. Now this also becomes one reason why this is the largest phylum. Because a question might come to your mind, why is it that in, an, uh, in the arthropod phylum so many animals actually exist, why don't they die? That's because they have this outer layer made up of chitin which acts as an extremely protective layer. Therefore, it helps them to survive in adverse conditions. And secondly, they have, due to the presence of the jointed legs, they can move from one place to another real fast. So because of such favorable things, members of the arthropoda um, phylum actually survives for a longer period of time. They can be free living or parasitic that is they can also live inside the body of some other host and derive its nutrients from them. They are mobile due to the presence of the muscle cells. Let us look at the variety of examples of arthropoda, spider, scorpio, crab, centipedes, cockroach, butterfly, grasshopper, mosquitoes, ants and bugs. So these are all examples of the arthropoda phylum. 
Let us now talk about the various organ systems in arthropoda phylum. So let us look at the different organ systems in arthropod. So here also we will start with the digestive system. They have a complete digestive tract. So here also they'll have a mouth and an anus and all the other parts of the digestive system. Talking about respiratory system, they, the respiration takes place here with the help of gills or lungs or tracheal system. So it differs in some insects. It is with the help of the tracheal system. So they have tube like structures called trachea. So gills are the respiratory organs in most aquatic forms. So gills are the organs of respiration for aquatic forms, whereas lungs and trachea are seen in terrestrial forms. Body surface also helps in gaseous exchange. So body surface is also an option which actually helps in gaseous exchange. Excretory system, they have malpigian tubules which are specialized organs for excretion. They help in removing the waste products from the body. So if you try to look at the structures, so this is how it will be like let us suppose if this is your this is the insect right so in the upper part you will actually have structures like this so this portion the upper portion is your stomach and this portion is the intestine and this lowermost portion is the rectum and somewhere here you have some tube like structures like this. So these tube like structures are the malpigian tubules which help in excretion. So this is roughly the excretory system of arthropods. Circulatory system, they have open circulatory system. What is open circulatory system? We discussed about open circulatory system, right? There are no blood vessels. That means all the internal organs are directly bathed in blood. So blood is present inside the body everywhere. There is no system of blood vessels. So they have hemolymph, that is blood and lymph mixed together to form hemolymph. Nervous system, they have Again, they have ladder-like nervous system. There are a paired ventral nerve cords running through all the segments. So here you can see the paired ventral nerve cords here. So where is the paired ventral nerve cord? So here you see this red color. This is one cord. This is another cord. So this and this together are a paired ventral nerve cord so they run through all the segments throughout the body this nerve cords run paired ganglia is formed in each segment so in each segment you have a paired ganglia or segmental ganglia so see this is one segment so here you have a paired ganglia again this is one segment you have a paired ganglia right so these are known as the segmental ganglia Brains are formed by fusion of the ganglia of these seg segments. So the ganglia of these segments fuse together to form the brain. So where is the brain? This is the brain. Specialized sensory organs are also present. What are the sensory organs? Pigmented ocelli, which are the photoreceptors. Where are they? They are present here, the eye-like structures. Bristles are also present on their cuticles which are touch and chemical receptors. So their body surface is covered by cuticle and on that cuticle you have small bristle like structures. They are sensitive to touch and chemicals. So this is the, so here also you can see why it is a ladder like structure. So here you see two ventral nerve cords and in middle the ganglia, segmental ganglia are joined together. So that gives a ladder like appearance and that is why they, it is said to have a ladder like nervous system. 
So let us talk about the reproduction in arthropods. So even here, the sexes are separate. That is, there is a distinct male and female sex. Internal fertilization in terrestrial arthropods. So talking about the type of fertilization, it is internal. That is, fusion between the male and female gametes will take place inside the body. External fertilization is also seen in some aquatic arthropods. So for the terrestrial arthropods, it is internal fertilization. But for the aquatic arthropods, it is external fertilization. That means the male gamete and the female gametes will be released by the organisms and the fusion will be, happen outside. Mostly oviparous. What do you mean by oviparous? Organisms which lay eggs. They are known as oviparous. And those organisms which directly give birth to young ones, they are known as viviparous. So human beings are viviparous, but arthropods are oviparous. And the eggs which are led by them are large and yolky. So they have yolk-like substance present inside them. So this was about the reproduction. Now, the most important feature of arthropod after which they are named are their jointed legs. And you would see that there are so many different varieties of arthropods that these jointed legs are modified in a number of ways in different arthropods to form antenna, mouth parts and reproductive organs. So here you can see these are the antenna, this long sting like structures. These are the mouth parts. So they are nothing but those modifications of the jointed legs. These arthropods were also the first land animals to tolerate higher temperatures because before this, whatever we studied, most of them favored marine habitats. That is, they wanted aquatic. They were all aquatic in nature. So arthropods were also the first animals to be purely terrestrial, which could tolerate high temperatures. Now, the examples are all the day-to-day -day life examples. We come across so many arthropods like spider, ant, bees. So they are all free-living arthropods. On the other hand, there are arthropods which are parasitic like lice. Some are not parasites but they can cause harm to human beings. Example is mosquito. So mosquito is a classic example because if you get a mosquito bite you might suffer from a disease like malaria but at the same time mosquito doesn't live inside your body. So it is not a parasite but it can cause harm to your body. So with this I think we have covered about the basic features, characteristics and mode of reproduction of arthropods. So development here Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.